Guys, you asked for it for so long. We finally got it. Merch is on sale right now. Uh, we rarely talk about it, but I want to start pushing it because we have a really cool designs that Joe and I made up ourselves, and it's the limited run. So whatever is on sale now, the second it's sold out, it's not coming back. It's available right now uh, in the links on these videos or at our website, SavileCanoComedy.com, JoeDeRosaInfo.com. That's Taste Buds merch. I also have solo merch. Uh, up there as well uh, and uh, so check all of it out and uh, and and buy some merch tweet at us the merch and we will retweet you or repost you on Instagram we want to see which ones you guys are liking and we want to see the merch out in the wild really cool project that we put together so to see it out there is going to be cool so check out our merch for Perch Guys, I'm on the road, and I hope you come see me. Let me tell you where I'm going to be very soon. All tickets on sale right now at SavileCanoComedy.com. October, I'm in Hamilton and Toronto, uh, Richmond, Virginia, and Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, in November, I'm in Knoxville. I'm in Atlanta. I'm in Birmingham. I'm in Louisville, and I'm in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, and in December, I am in Jacksonville, Tampa, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Sacramento, San Jose, and Santa Rosa, California. That rounds out my 2022 two of touring everything's on sale right now we added second shows in hershey we added second shows in toronto we had second shows in atlanta and tampa so thank you guys so much everybody else i hope to see you out there all right folks joe DeRosa here i got some dates coming up people from october 7th to the 8th i will be in william T <laughs> hey folks joe DeRosa here I got some dates to plug. October 7th and 8th, I will be in Wilmington, North Carolina at Dead Crow Comedy Room. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. October 14th to 16th, I'll be at Skank Fest in Las Vegas, Nevada. November 3rd, Holland, Michigan at the Park Theater. November 4th and 5th, Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Listening Room. And December 8th through the 10th at Coastal Creative Live. Uh, that's actually kind of special. The Thursday show, December 8th, is going to be We'll See You in Hell Live. And then Friday and Saturday, I'm doing stand-up shows live. So come out to all these shows. Go to joederosainfo.com for all ticket pricing and, and purchasing and show info and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and there's more dates being added all the time. I've got 20, 23 dates coming very soon. I hope to see you out there. Also, if you're in New York City, please come by Joey Rose's, my bar and sandwich shop on the Lower East Side. A great time. We open at 12 p.m. every day, Tuesday through Sunday. We are serving drinks and sandwiches the live long day and evening. Come on through joeyrosesnyc.com for all the info. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic. I'm hey folks, welcome to T-A-S-T-E Buds. And I do the chant solo today. No, no matter what happens, I love you. <laughs> did I do it? You did it. <laughs> all right. You did it at the wrong time, but you did it. Hey, all right. And there is no right or wrong here at Taste Buds, I say. Yeah? I say it's only love. Uh, to my left, the mighty Quinn. Brian Quinn is here filling in for Sal Volcano. How are you, buddy? Doing great, man. Doing great. I'm just glad. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, bud. I'm seeing a lot of you. We've been seeing a lot of each other lately, and I, I can say complaint free. I complaint free as well. Complaint free. I, we just I, spent, I like seeing you. That'll change after this episode today. <laughs> No, I'm familiar with your routines. You know what I real you know what I realized about myself this morning? And it and some people would say it's sad. I think it's a gift. I'm like the anti Barbara Walters. Like no matter who you sit me with on a couch, I can get you to start arguing and frustrate you. <laughs> I realize that's a gift I have today. And I was well, like, if Sal were ever to say, Joe, I can't do taste buzz anymore, I'd say, I'll miss you. Yeah. But no problem, because I'll <laughs> irritate anybody that sits on this Welcome couch. Welcome to Joe's me. Angry Couch. Yeah. Yeah, but you said something to me. Uh, we went to uh, Phoenixville. Yes, we were down in Phoenixville for a few days, you and I, shooting something together. Yeah, shooting yeah. something uh, something together. Um, I'm not on camera. I would like to stress that. Yes. It's well, not. Like, I don't want people to think, like, that I'm uh, going around putting myself on camera. This is all about you. Well, it's all about the subject, and yeah. I just am the host of this thing. Yeah. I'm producing. But you are producing it. It's very exciting. And you stepped on the camera here and there for fun. Sure, just yeah. to show them what, that we could have guests on here and there. Yes. But, but yeah. 
Yes, um, but we had fun down there. A lot of fun. Great town, Phoenix, Phoenixville. Amazing town. Uh, in the middle of Pennsylvania. We're going again, October. Yes, we're going in we're October. We're going to go see a movie at the Colonial Theater. At the Colonial Theater, which I'm wearing the shirt that I bought at the... Well, that they gave me. They gave yeah. me this, which is very sweet. Colonial Theater in Phoenixville is the theater where they shot the uh, certain sequence, the movie theater sequences of the blob, the original blob. This is a shirt, you know, this style of shirt is popular, but these are all the characters from the blob. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I still <laughs> have the remnants of a cough because I got sick as a dog down there. Yeah, I thought you were going to get me sick, but it turned out you didn't. I don't even, I still don't know if it was just allergies or what. Could have been. I mean, my God. But here's the big news, and we're burying the lead. And Pimp, I got to send you this stuff right now. Phoenixville is the town next to the town I grew up in. I grew up in Collegeville, or sometimes it's called Trap. Um, and while we were in Phoenixville, Brian brought up the ditch. <laughs> the famous ditch. We were seven minutes away from the ditch. Oh, uh, did you go? Pip, you not think? only did we go, I got a video right here. Like a six-minute video where he gives a tour of the ditch. Yeah. Yeah. I We revisited the ditch. <laughs> Uh, and I've got video to prove it right here. Yeah, oh it was God. it was um, more poignant. Like, cause you could go to the ditch with two attitudes, right? Like, oh, let's go f- see the stupid ditch. But we didn't take that attitude. We went like we took it for what it is. It was an important part of your childhood, and it meant something to you. And like, so we didn't go in like, ha ha, let's go look at this ditch. We went in like. Let's go see the ditch. Let's go see the ditch. Took it seriously. You gave a tour. Yes. And you spoke, I, I feel, pretty poignantly about the ditch. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and everything you're saying is, is truly resonating with me, by the way. I'm just looking at my phone not to... No, no, I get to, it. I have interest. I'm just trying to send this get to it. I'll, 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 I'm, I'm talking to the audience, too. Um, I'm letting them know. Because you're a consummate yeah. profesh. Yeah, I want uh, them to understand. I got an email at Pimp. It's too long. You're probably going to get it in a Google link or Can't something. Can't airdrop that to him? Right. Oh, how do you do that? You want me to do it? Yeah, here's my phone, yeah. Pimp. Airdrop it to yourself. I don't know what this It's like a mini sense. documentary on the ditch. Yeah. Here. So, yeah, we go to the ditch. <laughs> Actually, it's all on camera. Every revelation of the ditch was caught on camera. We, yeah. we did a six-minute video. There's some pictures. We took a picture of me staring into it. Not sitting and staring because the ground was filthy. Yeah, the ditch, much like a girlfriend that you dated in high school and you, and, and you see years later, the ditch wasn't the same. No. No, and, and you'll, see in the, you'll see in the video. You'll see in the video. It's, oh. it's, it's completely... I just called my dad about it yesterday. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, dad, it's weird. It's like all overgrown now because they planted like trees and stuff in it. And I said, dad, I got to be honest with you. It looked better when it was just a clean... Empty ditch. Like, now it looks like God knows what could be in there. Kind of swampy. And, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. But he told me when we were when I was a kid, he goes, he goes, remember we had muskrats down there going in and out of the drainage? Oh, yeah. And I was I was like, no, I don't. But but everything I told you at that ditch, he remembered all of it. Really? Yeah. The tale of Spooky the Dog, which will be on there. <laughs> yeah. Do you know about Spooky the Dog? No. Oh, you're going to learn all about it's still it. still downloading. It's almost done. Um, it's in the video. But you said something to me. This is how we got started on this. Okay, sorry. Because yeah. this is, I'm tying two things to your couch, Joe's Angry Couch, and, and Phoenixville. Phoenixville. You said to me in Phoenixville something that kind of hurt my heart a little bit. And I was like, like, oh, man, like I didn't, I hope, like I felt kind of bad. I didn't mention it at the time. And I, I didn't know if I was ever going to mention it to you. But since we're here on camera, now's the time. You said that you got our relationship off on the wrong foot do you remember saying this to me yeah yeah you were like bro because i love ball busting i know me too i i love it like and i and i I, my ball busting busting sorry is always the most toothless ball busting like i never i never try to put any bite behind it right i like to you know little swipes i you know i don't like being mean right But you you had said that you think that you got our friendship off on the wrong foot because now i ball bust too much with you I, well, and that upset me. I didn't quite mean that. Okay, let me ref- let me explain what I meant. I have a tendency to get into routines with people. Yeah, where the the consistent air back and forth is antagonistic. Yeah, not you know what? Let me rephrase that. <laughs> not even the consistent. The go to is antagonistic. Sure, and then that's the thing that you have to get past. 
first to get to the other stuff. Yeah. And you do get to the other stuff. But I've created that dynamic many times in my life with friends because it's like I come into it like ball breaking and whatever. Yeah. And you're good and at it. Thank you. You're yeah. good at it too. Thank you. Uh, and the thing is, is our relationship, our friendship was built. Well, it wasn't built. We were already friend. We were friends. But I would say our friendship elevated to a new level when we started playing beer pong yeah. at that summer house together yeah. and really like getting into the frustration and competition of it all and talking shit and all that stuff, which you've talked about on the pod and I've talked about on the yeah. pod. So that, that's why I said that. I was like, I know, because you were not antagonistic in beer pong. No. You were very just like, let's just play the game, man. No, I was gobsmacked a little bit because you were just hammering me. And right. I, like, uh, like, I was just trying to have fun. And so it was like, so I had to rise to the challenge. Yes. Yeah. And you would get very visually frustrated and you'd pace around. <laughs> you'd, you'd get very angry. And I thought it was funny and then I'd keep doing it. So that's what I meant at the table when oh, I oh felt yeah. <laughs> I was sick that day and we had to go shoot. And I was like, in my head, like, fuck, man, I don't feel good, but we got to go shoot today. And then I sat down, and we were, we, I was, like, like shoveling that fucking veggie burger down so we could go f shoot. And then you were busting my stones, and that's why I said, I was like, I did this to myself. I can't ask you to lay, lay off of me right now because I realize I have started yeah. this dynamic. But you can. You can ask me to lay off because, like, I don't, I, it's, I don't view our, our friendship as one of mainly ball busting. I just don't. Right. Like, it's an element of it that, in my mind, was kind of regulated to beer pong. But then when you said that, I, I, I was like, oh, man, am I, like, taking shots at him when I shouldn't be? I'm like, I, 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 I don't see that as a cornerstone in our relationship. And what I was doing that day was because you were not feeling well. Um, and, and you had to be on camera. And you, you did a great job. But my thing was just, like, a light touch, a little ball busting, might my, my, you know, lift, lift all, yeah. lift all boats. Yeah. And I was, I, and I was saying, oh, Christ, I'm not in the mood, <laughs> but I have no right to tell you. You, I'm do, not in you the have mood. every right to say I that. I know you're saying that now, but, but, and I get that. Yeah. I'm just telling you what I meant. Okay. I'm justifying what I meant when I said the thing that hurt your heart. Yeah. 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 That was not about you. That was about, okay. or about us. That was about me saying, uh, you did it to yourself again. You yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand now. <laughs> you I, know, I understand. Uh, Sal and I, Sal and I never argued except about food once in a while, which is why we started the show. Um, I believe that our friendship is now in a place that can never be repaired. Uh, <laughs> really? where, where we argue all the time, almost about everything, uh, because of this show. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I know, I know when it can go bad. You're, you're the second child. I'm not going to make the mistakes I made with the first kid with you. So you're saying it went bad with Sal? It's it's bad. Sal's the kid that's not going. He's my oldest. He's not going to show up at all the holidays. You know what I mean? You're going to have a much higher opinion of me when I when I go at the yeah. funeral. You'll do the eulogy. It'll probably. be me. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right. I got it. I understand. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, man, we had a great time down there. We, I, I don't want to talk about what we were doing uh, because it'll be more... Because you don't want to, you know. Yeah. But it was fun. We had a great shoot. Great shoot. And one of the places we visited was the Colonial Theater, which we're going to go back to on um, October 1st. Yeah. To watch... How cool is this? A double feature for the beginning of Halloween month of Evil Dead 2 and Cabin in the Woods. How like two of my favorite fucking horror movies. And, and Cabin in the Woods is, yeah. is digital. A digital projection. The, they got a 35 millimeter print of Evil Dead 2. I've never seen Evil Dead 2. In the, it's one of my favorite movies. Like, top three favorite movies. Love it. And I've never seen it in theaters, so I can't, I can't wait. So I went to... I have two quick Evil Dead 2 stories. Okay. I did see part of it in the theater, because one Halloween when I lived in Austin, I ate mushrooms with my friends, and we mm -hmm. went to see it. And I, I had such a bad trip... I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, dude, I was I was in a full panic attack, okay. like full. You actually told us about it. I think at I, your on your couch. Okay, yeah. So I won't go into the story again, but I left Evil Dead Two. Uh, I was like, I can't handle this right now. Okay. And then I went into Best in Show because that was like new in the theater oh, okay. at the time. Good choice. And that freaked me out even more. <laughs> really? I remember I walked in on the scene. 
It was a scene where Eugene Levy goes, I have two left feet. That's not a euphemism. I actually was, two left feet. And it pants yeah, down, yeah. and I was like, F dude, and I left. <laughs> 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 and oh, I went home. Great. But um, But the cooler Evil Dead 2 story... I was in L.A. at the time. I was living in L.A. And my friend Pat, Patty Walsh, who I do We'll See You in Hell with, which, by the way, we still got to have you on. Yeah. Um, we've only ever had two guests. You would be the third guest ever. I'm excited to be a guest. Yeah, yeah. We got to have you on. I'm worried if I'm sweating through my shirt. You look, you don't look like I'm not. Uh, you guys, really, you keep it warm in here. It's, uh, you know, it's only an apartment owned by a multimillionaire. <laughs> Do they know where the you're doing this? It doesn't, Do the I people think, know? I don't know. Don't oh, say, okay, just right. in case. Yeah. You know, but yeah, a man with money owns this place. Very rich person's apartment yeah, that, yeah. We're, that we're crashing in. And it was hard to figure out the Wi-Fi even. Yeah, it's pretty warm in here, yeah. But all right, so I'm just, if you see me doing this, it's not why I normally do it, which is like, do I look fat? It's like, am I sweating through my, my shirt? No, I, I do that too. And yeah, yeah. Mine is, though, do I look fat? Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> uh, we... Oh. um. So I, I, my friend Patty Walsh uh, used to write for It's Always Sunny, so he got invited to the season whatever premiere. It was years after he wrote for the show. And we went. We were at the after party. Glenn Howerton, who plays Dennis, is my favorite character on the show. Yeah, Dennis system, man. He's, oh, my God. I just saw best. their podcast live Sunday night. I went to Philly. I saw Always oh, they, Sunny podcast live. Oh, really? They were great. Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah. Um, I guess that's why Sal called me and not you uh, for it. You two are fucking arguing and fighting. That's cool. <laughs> I didn't get to meet them. I was like, Did oh. Sal go down? He, he came. He, we went down. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad he found time. <laughs> I'm glad he found the time to make it down to Philly for somebody else's, to watch somebody else's podcast. It was great. Well, we were hoping we were going to meet. The, you know, the, the three guys because we, mm -hmm. we've been fans of the show. And oddly, they've been, they're on, for most of their run and, and our run, we've aired, I think, in competition to sure. each other. But I've never given a shit. I'm like, I don't fuck. Always Sunny is great. Like, yeah. watch Always Sunny. Like, our show's yeah, on all great. the time. Yeah. Uh, I love that show. So we were going to go down there and, and, and get, and we were like, yeah, we, you go backstage and meet the guys, which was big. Like, I'm, I'm a legit fan of Always Sunny. Love it. And then we got there and we saw someone that we had, like a, uh, a promoter that we haven't seen in a while mm -hmm. and ended up talking to him until the show started. Uh, and then they left. They walked off stage, oh, which which I understand. Nothing on them. Like that's what I do after stage. So I didn't all that. I didn't even get to meet those guys. That's uh, that's uh, that's interesting. I think they got away with more than even Family Guy. Their jokes were wild. They oh, got yeah. away with the most, which is why it's a bummer to me that sometimes on the podcast. Oh, well, I heard Rob McElhenney say this once, and I, but it it bummed me out. He talked about one of the the episode where they 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 go to the he goes to the coach. Oh, and uh, he's like, "Why don't you molest molested, me?" Yeah. yeah. And Rob McElhenney said on the podcast, "He's like, you know, I I get now that a, something along the lines of I get now this 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 type of joke isn't funny." And it's like, uh, "Yes, it is, dude. Yes, it yeah, is. I know we're in a different world, and I know that you're much bigger, but it's funny, dude. Yeah. Like, so it's funny. I, I mean, he also got older. You know, sure. things things like that happen. I hope they don't sterilize the show. I guess you know, moving forward. I, I hope be, not. Yeah, I hope not too. But anyway." But I don't think they will. I don't I mean, think they so. They know what they're doing. Yeah, that cast yeah. is great. I love the show. I love the crew. I've met Rob a million times. He's always very cool whenever I see him. Um, I met all of them. Rob is the one I kind of know. But um, Dennis, uh, Glenn Howerton, I didn't know at all. And we were at the premiere party, the after party, and we were upstairs in the bar that it was at, and Glenn Howerton was the only cast member that was upstairs. And I was like... I, I I said to Pat, I go, I really want to fucking meet him, man. Like, I just think he's amazing. Yeah. I think AP Bio is hilarious. Like, and Pat introduced me, and as he was introducing me, uh, Glenn goes, "Hey, dude, nice to meet you." And he goes, "Hey, we're just talking about um, that like Wizard of Oz, Pink Floyd thing." Mm. And I go, "Oh, no shit." And I go, "You know what I did recently?" And he goes, "What?" And I go. I don't know why I just tried it and it actually kind of worked. I got high and I put on Evil Dead 2 and I put on Metal, the the Metal album by Pink Floyd, and it kind of sunk up. And really? He, and he goes, wait, what? hold on, dude. Hold on, dude. You're my new best friend now. Hold on. And he went off and had to say bye to somebody and he came back and he goes, Evil Dead 2 is my favorite.
movie. Get out, really? He goes, I want to talk about this. And he goes, and I love the album Metal. Let's talk about this. And we started talking, and we hung out for like an hour. Oh, wow, well, that's cool. Just kind of kicking it, having drinks, like talking about horror movies, talking yeah. about... And I said to him, and it was cool because he got it, and he got that I wasn't fanning out. Like, he just got... It was, it was a cool moment. I go... It was the season when he had left and he wasn't going to come back, but yeah. then he came back. Yeah, that was weird because he was only gone like three episodes. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they showed the episode where he comes back. And I go, dude, coming into the theater, I go, this is the only thing I'll say to you as a fan. Outside of this, we just talk as people because I get it. I understand that that'll be annoying. And I go, seeing the episode tonight, I didn't know if you were going to come back or not. Uh, when you showed up on camera... I go, dude, f as a fan of this show, that for me was like when Han Solo walked back onto the Falcon. Yeah, I see. I agree. Yeah, it was and, big. Yeah, and he was like, he's like, yes, dude, that's fucking awesome. Like, he just got it. He got that I wasn't ball washing him. Right. He, he also, without being too in his own ego, understood why it was cool to a fan. Yeah. Without it being like, like, yeah. well, of course it was fucking cool. You know what I mean? I'm sure he's happy to hear it. Like, yeah. You know, it was, it was, he was cool, man. Right. Was, they were, all, and then I saw, I saw Rob that night too. And Rob was really cool. He's a ball breaker. Is he? Yeah. I never he met, was. I never met any of those guys. I had one interaction with Charlie Day. Yeah. Um, he was, I, I guess maybe he was shooting, uh, what's that fucking kaiju movie, Pacific Rim or whatever. I don't know. I was driving off and I believe this is. I can only say this four times in my life. Like, this isn't like I saw... But, like, I was driving off the Fox or Paramount lot in L.A. We'd gone there for some bullshit meeting. And uh, the, the car, my car was coming out of the front gate, and his was coming in, and security had stopped him. And security stopped me going out for some reason. So we were just sitting next to each other. And I look over, and I'm like, holy fuck, it's Charlie. You know, and it's that thing, and people do it to me all the time, where they're like, oh, it's Charlie. I know him. Yeah. So I rolled down the window. I go, oh, man. I go, I love you. And he goes, I love you, man. <laughs> But That's he didn't great. know who the f I was. He was just doing it. Oh, oh, like, he wasn't well, like, I know impractical nice jokes because I love you. Yeah. And he yeah. was like, he's like, I love you, man. And then security let us both go. And that was my interaction with Charlie Day. And I, it was enough for me. I was like, that was really, that was like a nice little moment. I bet that was when he was, my friend was doing a sitcom called The Cool Kids. I think that was on that lot. Oh, okay. oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. You said it was Pacific Rim he was doing. Oh, I don't, I have no idea. I'm just, I don't know why he would be there. I'm just. My, but Pat, same guy. Pat Walsh was running a sitcom, it was a showrunner on a sitcom called The Cool Kids that Charlie Day, I guess, created. Okay. Or was EP on or something. And uh, I think they did it at, pa I think they oh, did it at. I, I it might even have the wrong studio. I, I, you know, whatever. Whatever. But that was it. That was my only interaction with those guys. Um, I was hoping for more Sunday, but I didn't get it. That's cool. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know where we're at. So Evil Dead, but he loved Evil Dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, let's let's get the focus off of the trip that was made down to Philly on Sunday. Oh, I didn't do anything wrong. No, you didn't. You didn't. Yeah, I'm you didn't, fine. You didn't, I'm you didn't, great. I'm Pip, in my... You got any thoughts on this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> well, you guys take that up with Sal. That's got. My name's Paul. This is between y'all. You know, I think I will be taking oh, this no. up with so. No, I'm, I'm fucking around. Um, and by the way, I got to point out, I put this right next to me, the fuck pig himself right yeah. here. Oh, yeah, my the God. The eyes follow you. It's I, I went to St. Gennaro with him last night, and he ate maybe 4,000 calories in 20 minutes. He's <laughs> a <f> animal, dude. <laughs> He's an animal. He had sausage and peppers, two cannolis, Oof. stuffed peppers, a cinnamon toast, crunch milkshake, and two slices of pizza. Oh, that sounds so good! It's so much. <laughs> Not the cinnamon toast crunch, but the like the sausage and peppers. There's good. yeah, yeah. No, no. All of it individually, except for the milkshake, sounds good to me. Isn't he like six eight? Isn't he like a big boy? He's no. huge. Not big enough to hide all that. No, mm -hmm. Chris is like six two. Really? Yeah. Why well, looms Bobby, larger in my Bobby mind. Lee said the funny when I was on the pod when I was on ba uh, not bad friends uh, uh, Tiger Lily, Tiger Belly, uh, with Bobby Lee when I was in L.A. and Chris, <laughs> we brought up Chris and Bobby goes, "It's disappointing in real life. You think he's going to be better looking?" <laughs> <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> it was so. Funny. Do you guys like San Gennaro? Have you? Do you I love San Gennaro. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna avoid it this year because I'm on this new diet. 
of, uh, you know, I'm really, really cut way back on meat and trying to cut back on the booze and all that stuff. But, uh, but, uh, so San Gennaro is not a fun place. Yeah. If you're not eating sausage or drinking. It's the only thing you have in Joey Rose's too. I know. <laughs> I've tasted the sandwiches enough times. I know what they taste like. Uh, and I'll taste test the new ones, but. But yeah, I don't know. Are you going to go? I'm not going to go this year. I probably won't go this year. Uh, but uh, I have gone many times. You know, I've probably been like 10 times over the course of my life. When I was young, young, and my parents would bring me, uh, I remember lo- really loving it. It wasn't as crowded. Like something happened in my 20s where I went and I was like, this is too much. Like, I- there's too many people. Like, and now you- it's just too many people to be enjoyable. It's a lot me. of people. And, and also, too, like the fact that it's happening as I'm getting over this bug that I still have. A- green call from yeah the idea of going into a crowded whatever and right now is photo uh, shoots going on now it's all about social media oh yeah, yeah. It's cringe. Cringe. it was cringe oh i um, do this thing um i'm big on webcams have i ever told you this like yeah. i watch them constantly like I'll, I'll put them on my house and just leave them running like the zoo or like the zoo i'll do animal ones but there's two i love there's one in key west um uh by uh outside of irish kevin's and then there's one outside the Temple Bar in Dublin. You ever go to Temple Bar in Dublin? It's a big famous bar there. I, don't, I mean, I don't think I went when I was there, but I don't remember. And they're great for two reasons. Like, one, the dr- that's it. The drunks, like, and there's sound too. So you could hear conversations and stuff. The drunks uh, at night are, f- it's, you can't beat the entertainment. Like, you like people watching, you sit in a bar and people watch? You could sit here and watch this and just have the same experience. Okay. And- I've noticed in the past couple of years, so many, so many of his girls just like doing like, the f- like a photo shoot or like here your boyfriend take fifty photos sure. and they do the hair flip and turn around. I I I don't hate much and I'm not typically a salty dude, but these like I don't know what's going on. Like I hate sure. these photo shoots, the, the 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 synchronized dance that they all do on TikTok. I'm like you girls are destroying what makes you special I, with yeah. this bullshit i feel like girls date me for headshots it's so <laughs> bad man it's like you're out you're yeah. you're you're at okay. temple bar and like you're just Been doing there. a photo shoot and you're like dude this sucks you suck mm-hmm. you you suck because you have no shame to do it in front of everybody yeah. and everybody you look stupid it's gross and it and it perpetuates uh it perpetuates a certain prejudice in your head about what what people are going to do. Folks, prize picks, prize picks, prize picks. When it comes to daily fantasy, placing entries, uh, player projections, etc., you want to go to prize picks, all right? They are making it easier, more versatile, and more fun than anybody else out there on the internet when it comes to your fantasy entry projections and all that sort of thing. What I really like about prize picks is... I'm a guy that doesn't understand sports. I don't really know sports, but I do like this type of involvement in sports. I find it very fun. I find it exciting. Uh, Prize picks makes it not only easy for a bonehead like me to understand, okay, and on how all this works. For instance, by showing you basically percentages. Uh, instead of getting into terms like over under and all that sort of thing, by just showing you in stark easy to understand black and white numbers, what something, the return on something would be versus the risk or whatever. It it makes it just completely easy to understand how this all works. And I like that because again, I'm not a sports guy, but I like this sort of thing when it comes to sports. Um, I also like the versatility of prize picks. You trust me, there's something out there for you. uh, If you want to get involved in uh, this kind of fun, Uh, there's the, you know, they, they've got the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, the NHL, the PGA, they got college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, the WNBA, uh, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, uh, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, for God's sake. It just goes on and on and on, and your entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy, and these withdrawals are safe and fast. Prize Picks is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So look, go download the Prize Picks app. You're going to have a good time, or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play da- daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit that will match up to $100 
with the promo code taste buds. So that means if you deposit a hundred bucks, prize picks will give you a hundred bucks. If you deposit 50 bucks, prize picks will give you 50 bucks. You get it. Don't forget to enter your promo code taste buds at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. Prize picks. Butcher box, folks. What is your typical grocery experience? I will tell you mine. I go when I don't have time. I go when I'm not in the mood. Uh, and I go and I can't find half of the meat products I want because uh, the store doesn't have the ones I want. And if they do have the ones I want, it's not the cut I want. And if they do have the cut I want, it's not the price I want. Butcher box has what you need. They're going to speak to every issue I just said. How? Convenience, sending it to your front door. Uh, price, making it more affordable than anywhere else. Uh, the cuts you want, quality cuts, only the best cuts. This is what Butcher Box is doing for you. It's alleviating this headache of the grocery store meat hunt, which I know is not the most attractive way to put it, but that's how I'm putting it. It's a meat hunt out there. Butcher Box is offering new members free New York strip steaks, two of them, two free New York strip steaks, and eight ounces of cold cracked lobster in your first box, plus $10 off. Folks, that's two free New York strip steaks and eight ounces of cold cracked lobster in your first box, plus $10 off. What more do you want? Give it a try. Butcher Box gives you peace of mind, all right? They're taking the guesswork out of finding the high-quality meat and seafood you can trust. It's ultimate convenience. You get what you want delivered right to your doorstep, and it's an incredible value. Again, enjoy a range of high-quality cuts that are hard to come by at the grocery store at an amazing price. Enough already. Do it. They're saving you money. They've saved me money. I've used this service. It's a great service. You know we talk about it almost every episode. So, Butcher Box, again, offering our listeners free New York strip steaks, two of them, plus lobster, plus 10 bucks off your first box. Just, just, just do it. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash taste buds and get two 10 ounce New York strip steaks and eight ounces of lobster claw and knuckle meat free in your first order plus $10 off your first box. That's butcherbox.com slash taste buds. You know, this thing just came out about uh, Adam Levine or whatever his name is. Oh, yeah. What happened to Adam Levine? He apparently had an affair with a, with a, with a influencer. Oh, that sounds like a smart maneuver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. There's I mean, someone that, that won't fucking, abuse it for power. Yeah moron move on his part but then he tries to name the the, the thing is he supposedly tried to name his baby with his <laughs> wife after the influencer who knows how much of this is true how much isn't but my initial response to it is adam levine is a fucking moron and fuck this lady for clout chasing like this yeah because nothing with so many people now is private it's like can't anybody just have quiet shame anymore can't anybody just take a silent defeat anymore? Everything now has to be exploited and like, here's all my dirt I, and here's all my dirty laundry and here's what happened to me. And this is, it's like, you know, man, like there's something dignified and gr about grace about like, hey man, I've taken some files and I've had some dark personal times. Yeah. It's not for everybody all the time. Are you talking about fucking Adam Levine? <laughs> well, going on being like, well, we had a year long affair, and this, it's like, yeah, what are you doing? What, that what, for? Is, what is this? A gossip rag? Like, what? Stop. I, I like, know. everybody's a gossip rag now. Yeah. Like, it's just gross. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to lead to what they want either. Like, nobody's going to be like, you're the one that, like, I assume Adam Levine is having yeah. affairs. Here's I, what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's you know going mean? to like, call Adam Levine an asshole for two months. Yeah. And then he's going to go away and have a kid. And then he's going to come back in two years with a new Maroon 5 record and everybody's going to go, oh my God, it's brilliant. And yeah. that's, that's going to be the end of it. It's such fleeting. It's, it's just a thing you don't want to be defined by. But people, it, it, it's like, it's small armed robbery uh, uh, or strong, I'm using the wrong term, but you know what I mean. It's, yeah. small, time, it's small time crooks. It's we're going to go in and do a smash and grab. It's like, yeah, yeah but you're not thinking about the big picture. Yeah, especially like something like that where it's like you had an affair. And, and I mean, look, I don't know. I, I'm just learning about this from you. But like, especially if nothing, like if he beat the shit out of her, then by all means, like. Sure, just yeah. Like, I don't, you know, but well, it doesn't sound like that happened. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. But <laughs> From um, what I saw in the headlines, it was no, there was no accusation or and what I, the little bit I read of the story. There was no accusation of anything. Right. It was just like, can you believe this dildo tries to name his 
That is a weird move. I, I will say this in his defense. I met him, and he was so nice to me. He was warm and generous and nice to me. So, uh, you know, whatever you think of Adam Levine, I just let you know, like, I, I met the guy. He was fucking sweet. I mean, sweet you guy. know, I'm sure Tiger Woods is a fucking dream. You know what yeah. I mean? When you talk to him. But, he, you know, the guy likes the guy likes a little fucking yes. something on the side, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. I just, this, this, this concept anymore of, like, I will achieve uh, longevity and notoriety by the means of promoting and producing my art or pursuing a craft of some sort or or a trade in the arts or whatever is 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 disappearing and you're just seeing more and more of these people like going after this like fleeting celebrity and i guess it's not that different like you know you know like marie antoinette was like was like the first paris hilton or whatever was you know she what I mean? really yeah yeah so like it's really? like yeah, she was like considered like a socialite, like whatever. Oh, you know okay. What I mean, I think I'm pretty the sure royal that's family's accurate. influencers. I don't know. Huh? The royal families throughout history were all influencers. Yeah. So, like, I guess it's not anything new. It's just more accessible now than right. ever before. Well, no, but it bums me out. Everyone's a fucking influence. Like everybody's making content. You can't escape it. Yeah, it's but that's wild all right. Too, like, but it's also well, that's fine. Yeah. It just it bums me out that it's like it, that. Pe- it, it it the the definition of all this stuff starts to get polluted after a while. These terms get bastardized. Yeah, and and it just and everybody's the the fruit gets lower and lower, and then the the lower it gets, the more people go to grab it, and then all of a sudden it's like everybody's focused on the wrong thing right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I mean, I remember I read an article that was like. Comedians are making waves on TikTok. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I and I looked at the article and I knew most of the guys on it. And they're friends, some of them are friends of mine. But they were like putting up guy they were like highlighting guys that had like twenty two thousand TikTok followers. I'm like, what is this? Because the person that like, writes the article doesn't give a shit either. Yeah. And they're like, let me just see what's going and then they just that's it. I or mean, they'll go, an influencer got in trouble, and then you go to their profile, and it's like, they have 35,000 followers on Instagram. And you're like, that's what an influencer is now? Well, you can also it was like it. when you had a million five. That meant influencer. Or that person paid for the article. Because um, that's the other side of that business. Yeah, there's yeah, the whole right. payola, yeah. right. new payola, whatever. Anyway, what are we talking let's about? Let's get to the battle. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you, 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 guys, you guys were late. I wasn't late. Well, you were seven minutes late. All right. Um, I was in the parking lot. Uh, so we have like 22 minutes. Okay. To shit. settle right, this. Let's go. All right. And I know, uh, you know, I know what we're really going to get down to. This is I ultimately going to be an argument about Back to the Future Part 3. Well, hold on. Hold on. Okay, Don't spoil right. it. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Time for B-A-T-T-L-E, Buds. Folks, it's the Back to the Future franchise versus the Star Wars franchise. You probably know what side I'm on, and yes, it is the Star Wars franchise. Brian Quinn, my dear friend, foolishly <laughs> thinks that Back to the Future's franchise, as a Star Wars fan, he thinks it has legs against this franchise. Uh, well, you know. I'd like you to give me an opening statement, Brian, on why. Now, by the way, there was some pushback about the Back to the Future not being a franchise. From who, Joe? Seth! <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. That was that cold coming back up again. Uh, but uh, but as, you ex- as you were saying to me, and I was agreeing, and I was saying to Sal, I was like, no, Back to the Future is a franchise. There are video games. There's a cartoon. Animated series. There's, uh, there's video games. Yes. There's, Rick uh, and Morty was originally called Doc and Marty. Doc and Marty. It was supposed to be Back to the Future. There's a Broadway play coming next yes. year. So yes. it's like, that's a franchise. What more do you need to do a franchise? And there's always talk of, will there ever be a part four? Which I doubt. But I promise I doubt. you they'll do some sort of reboot or something at some Not point. Not till Zemeckis dies, right? You know, well, or, or we'll see. I mean, Zemeckis did just make Pinocchio. Yeah, I didn't see it. Whew. <laughs> why is why are people saying it is whoop, why everybody's saying it's the worst piece of shit but why nobody's telling me why it is a it's not a beat for beat remake of the, it's of the a, movie it's a beat it's an almost beat for beat remake of the cartoon what changes do they make changes that i couldn't even really speak to just yeah. when you see it in the movie 
you're like, oh, that obviously wasn't in the cartoon. But like the island where he turns into a donkey, not good. The whale thing, not good. You would think that would all be fun. Bro, it's it's a movie with like four real people in it, and mm. then everything around them is CGI. So you're going, why did you make an animated movie <laughs> That's <remake> animated. <laughs> that has like a live Tom Hanks in it? Yeah. Tom Hanks is passable or serviceable in it. It's getting annoying. Like this is the role that kind of breaks the camel's back for me with him, where it's like, my uh, friend, my friend said it best. He Tom goes, "Take Hanks. a f- he goes, take a f- day off." It's like, good. I think I think that's his second bomb of the year. Elvis was a bomb. I love Elvis, Elvis. wasn't a How bomb. How dare you? How dare you? Hold on, we don't have time to divert. No. Okay. This. All right. All right. All right. I thought Elvis. The was movie good. stinks. The movie, movie stinks. stinks. And it's the eighty seventh thing. I've seen Keegan Michael Key in this week. <laughs> You're like, bro, for the love of God, man. Gotta, what is he supposed to say? No, when he gets a paycheck, you got to take it. You know what? Yes, he should say no once Why? in a while. Why? He's not out there fucking directing. Nope. Like the mother. Like he needs these. It's enough already. Take a day off. <laughs> For the love of God. Like, it's like... You, if this, you were in those shoes, I don't think you'd take a day off. Bro, If yeah, I would. You don't know me very well. My mer- my work ethic goes to an extent. Yeah, but I'm not talking about work ethic. You think if they call them and they're like, hey, man, they're going to give you... They're going to cut you a check for fucking $300,000 to fucking do Pinocchio. And I go, what else do I got this week? And they go... Well, you gotta play a you gotta play a rat in the live action Rat Tattooey remake. Uh, how much is that? How and then also, that but no, he's already booked for that. And then also, we got you in a in a yeah. in a sketch on SNL. And then also, uh, you're hosting a game show. I go, you know what? No, I'm not gonna do the other That's thing. Not on true. Top of I'm all telling that. you, I don't believe you. You would be like, holy fuck! Now I can afford a bigger pool. Now I can afford that boat I want. Now I'm going to get that fucking car. And all I got to do is stand in a booth and be like, Pinocchio, you got to remember who you no, are. No, it's full motion cap. It's uh, full uh, motion Or cap. whatever, man. Put the balls on me. I'll be, I'll be Bro, sitting there I've going, done full, Pinocchio. I've done full motion cap. It's no walk in the park. Yeah, all right. It's no walk in the park. But I'm sure he's getting paid. Uh, but wait, uh, we're wasting valuable minutes. We are. Okay. I love me, Star. I, I, yeah, I'm sure he's getting paid. I wouldn't put myself in a position where I would, like, I'm putting Star Wars against Back to the Future because I have to. But like normally, I wouldn't be like Back to the Future is better than Star Wars. But here we are, and I'm gonna I'm going to do what I normally do and talk about the, you know, positives of Back to the Future, not why Star Wars sucks. For the most part, I don't think Star Wars sucks. <coughs> but you do think fairly, yeah, that the amount of Star Wars content yeah. has lessened the overall value of that franchise. Yes, my feeling is Star Wars, and, and, and this is going to sound like a slam, but it's not. Star Wars is, after George Lucas is involved, it's essentially fan fiction at this point. I wouldn't argue that. Yeah, so to me, I'm like, but I... Which that, is, by the way, why I said this had to be, because Sal was like, just do trilogy versus trilogy. I was like, no. Yeah. That yeah. Star Wars then will bury it. It'll be original trilogy. There's just, it's just not, right. there's no chance. Once you expand it to franchises... Now, I would actually make the argument for Back to the Future that the lesser amount of content has preserved that original trilogy. The original Star Wars trilogy, magical as it is, has been, I think, in quality depleted by the amount of other stuff that's been built up around it. Because you can't watch it now without seeing all the connections that they've made to some other things. Yes. Right. Go ahead. And also, less is more sometimes. The Matrix was way better when you didn't know what city they lived in, when they were unplugged, and when you didn't have to watch this awful fucking fourth installment reboot that they did, (laughs) uh, or that third shit show, whatever. You know what I mean? The Matrix, when it was just Matrix 1, great, and there was all this mystery. If you didn't live through it, you don't know what it was like. The Matrix was a fucking phenom like you you it was the new star people wars were obsessed with it yeah yeah so anyway tell me why back to the future you think is great well i think the reason everybody thinks back to the future is great like it's the character i mean that's it's kind of a crazy question like why do you think star wars is great no, I, but but you said you were going to talk about the positives of back to the future sure but like all right well look at <laughs> but i know where we're headed with this i almost want to just jump to no, it, no, but, go ahead all right Go ahead. The first one's a masterpiece. First one's a masterpiece. Fucking masterpiece. It's 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 a creative idea uh, that you don't. I don't know if they'd make it today. You know him trying him him with his mom and all that shit. Like sure. you don't know. Not that that matters, and that's overused anyway. I think, but like you haven't seen anything like that. And I mean the con the way I mean the concept of time travel. They made time travel fun. 
The DeLorean is like nothing I've ever seen before. The DeLorean was my like I it was like before I was into women, like I wanted to fuck the DeLorean. Uh the DeLorean is cool. Yeah. And I will but I will tell you what lessens the DeLorean. What lessens the DeLorean? As kids, when we saw Back to the Future, yeah. and we didn't know what the fuck a DeLorean really was. Sure. We just saw that car and it looked so cool. And Marty goes, you made a time machine out of a I'm DeLorean? A DeLorean? And it's just kind of funny, and you're yeah. like, whatever, I don't get it. Uh, you go back to it now, and you're like, oh, that was like a DeLorean joke. Like, because the oh, DeLorean failed. Way. Like, it was this, supposed to be the car yeah. of the future, and it failed. And then they make this, like, DeLorean joke. But it works on in the other way, too, though. What? Like, I never thought that. Or never, it's a shameless product place well they had the del- well the biz- it yeah. was out of business already wasn't it by then or- i don't know right. i don't know but my point is is that t- when i got older and i and i you started to see the documentaries about john delorean and yeah. then uh, the movie about john delorean it took away from what that was for me it wasn't quite as magical okay it wasn't quite as this machine from elsewhere that i had never seen and whatever like let's say the millennium falcon but sure it's not my turn to talk. It's your turn to talk. No, no, we could talk because I, I love the Millennium Falcon. Like, like that's why we're in such a pickle right now because I love both. But the DeLorean was the thing. Like, look, I, I put it this way. The Millennium Falcon, which I love. You know I love it. I have fucking tributes to it in my house. Um, is, at the end of the day, a spaceship, right? And, like, you could have kind of those adventures as a child in your head with, on your bed with a spaceship. Something about turning a car or vehicle into a time machine opened things up more for me in my mind. Like suddenly my bike was a time machine. You know what I mean? Like when I was a kid and like if I pedaled fast enough, I broke the barrier. Brian wasn't a bright kid, folks. <laughs> no, what are you talking about? <laughs> he my was bike, a gullible kid. I'm kidding. No, my bike was my bike yeah. was a transformer. Right. You know, when I was a kid. And my bike was a DeLorean. My bike couldn't be the Millennium Falcon. Right. It could be the speeder bike on, on Endor. Right. But it wasn't it couldn't be the Millennium Falcon. Whereas anything, it, once you make a car into a f- time machine, I, to me, that busts open the imagination. And then they make a train into a time machine. I, t- t- well, t- don't get ahead of yourself. Don't go right to where the, the, the entire franchise sucks. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get us to. Look, Cause, cause back this to is the really future. the only argument we're going to have. Back to the Future 1 is, 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 is a masterpiece, much yeah. like A New Hope is a masterpiece. Sure. Back to the Future 2 is not as good as Back to the Future 1, but it's fun. It's great. Empire Strikes Back super is better yeah. than the original masterpiece. Agreed. <laughs> Return of the Jedi lands the ship clumsily, but enough. Back to the Future 3 is one of the worst sequels That's I have ever seen in my entire how life. On Earth? Now, why? Now, I never, you always say this to me. But you never fucking, you just quantify it with bullshit. You're like, it's about Doc. Why is it about Doc? Shouldn't be. The entire franchise is based on the McFlies. That is the entire franchise. It is based on Marty McFly, this kid that doesn't get his family, whose family are these dejected losers. Every person, the uncle's a jailbird, the mom's an alcoholic, yeah. the dad's a yutz, yeah. the sister is a mess. He fixed them. The brother is up it, it's every person in this family is yeah up. and then he is sent back he wants nothing to do with these people and he is sent back in time accidentally to save not only the life of his best friend doc yeah. the only person he can relate to because he's from such a dysfunctional family well, that's what he about. hangs out with an older man who's a scientist right oh which is so odd right yeah but the whole point is, is he goes back and he fixes his family. Yeah. At the end of Back to the Future 1, Doc comes, shows up in the time machine. What's, what's going on? Marty, you saved your parents. Yeah. Now it's your kids. Yeah. We have to go into the future. We have to go back to the future. Sure. He coins the f- phrase and justifies the title in the last two minutes of the movie. No, he said, he said it in, in one. He That's goes, we're going to send you back to the one. future. No, 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 no. He says it. He says it in one. Before that, we're going to send you back to the future. He says that in one. Like I think he only says it at the end. Where do we got to go? Back, back to the future. Mm. He's well, whatever. In in in, in you might be right, but I, I, they spin the title then, right? Twice. They, 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 this isn't it. The one point twenty one. He's like, 
when he tells him about the lightning, he's like, this is it. This is it. We're going to say, I thought it was there, but I, I could think it's only at the end. But even if he says okay. it twice, sure. The end, the end usage of it gives it a whole new meaning from yeah. what the <laughs> entire story up to I that point. I argue that the but, end of two is just as fucking but hold on, awesome. We're not, but we're not talking about that. Hold on. What are we talking about? What we're talking about is, is there it is. See, I told you I could <laughs> bring it out of anybody. The, uh, what we're talking about is at the end, he says, now it's about your kids. Yeah. And that's, and then you get into two and this is where the problems start. Folks, I run hot, not just emotionally, not just mentally, but physically. I'm always hot, especially when I sleep. I hate getting hot when I sleep. A lot of the time that has to do with the sheets you're sleeping on, you're bedding. And that's why I like Miracle Brand. Okay. It's hard enough in the summertime to deal with the heat. And I know we're coming out of summer, but guys, I got news for you. In a lot of places, it's still going to be warm for quite some time. And I find that Miracle Brand is a great way to stay cool at night so I don't wake up sticky and sweaty. Uh, you know, this is eco-friendly bedding uh, such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent, prevent 99% of, by the way, bacteria because that's what happens when you're sweating in your bedding. Bacteria grows and stuff. And this requires three times less laundry because of how they are preventing these things from happening. They have self-cooling properties. Uh, it's a silver-infused fabric that it was originally developed by NASA. <laughs> I'm sold. Miracle brand sheets are, uh, here's a word you don't hear often, thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long, self-cleaning because the sheets are infused with a natural silver that prevents 99.9% .9 of bacterial growth, all right? Uh, their luxurious comfort, their quality, okay? 500 thread count, sateen weave that's made with U.S. grown, so Pima cotton, it's just better on your skin. It's better for you. Everything about this is better. So go to trymiracle.com slash taste buds. Again, trymiracle.com slash taste buds. Here's the deal you're going to get. If you use our promo code taste buds at checkout, you're going to save 40% and get three free towels. They got towels too. Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not 100% satisfied, you get your full refund. No worries. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle brand. Go to trymiracle.com slash taste buds. Use the code taste buds and get three free towels and save 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash taste buds. Thank you, Miracle Brand, for sponsoring this episode. Hello, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. Subscribe to Hello, Fresh and check save money off your fall to do list. You want to save some money this fall? I know you do. I do. You don't have to worry about it with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout and less expensive than grocery shopping. With HelloFresh, ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days so you know that they're fresh. Plus, pre-portioned ingredients make cooking a snap and cut down on food waste. That's one thing I hate. When I, I cook a lot for myself, and one thing I like about the meal kits versus doing everything, my cobbling all together myself is I end up with a, with a considerable amount of food waste. As a guy that lives alone, I feel bad about that. You just can't get through all of it. And trust me when I tell you people, I have had many times in my life where I've gone out into the street with leftover food and tried to find somebody to give it to and, 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 and not, I had failed. I had not been able to find anybody. I know that sounds surprising living in New York City, but it's true. I like that HelloFresh is giving you what you need, what you're going to use. It's it's appropriate amounts, and you're not wasting uh, food. I, I, I really, really like that about them. Uh, I also like that HelloFresh is here to work with your ever-changing schedule. Our schedules change. Plans are flexible. You can choose your meals for the week. You can update your preferences. You can change your delivery day. All with the app. All with the app. And changing seasons means changing tastes. With 30-plus weekly recipes to choose from, HelloFresh has something for everyone. You can customize your meals. You can swap out the proteins. You can swap out the sides. Uh, you can upgrade to choice proteins. You can add protein to a veggie meal. You can do all kinds of stuff. I think it's really, really great. So, anyway, go to HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds65 and use code TasteBuds65 for 65% off plus 
free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds65 and use code TasteBuds65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. They spend about a hot 15 minutes yeah. working on Marty's kids. Sure. And then they go back and they get greedy. Then they go back to 1985 and it's Biff 1985. Yeah. Then they go back to the fucking past again. And they do way too much in the sequel that has... I disagree. And they do so much in the sequel, these fucking Gavones, they got nothing left for the third movie what now. What does that mean? It means... <laughs> What is Gavon? It means like a like a pig, like a Gavon. <laughs> it's like a glutton. Yeah, but like, like but, a glutton. But you and didn't love they, like they burn out what they got. They burn. They, they have nothing left for three. And then Zemeckis even like says, "I always wanted to do a western. I thought it'd be fun to do a western yeah, for parts." I think he was right. Ugh. But like the, the but Ugh. two is I like I wanted to do Pinocchio too. But two, <laughs> look, we all get old, all right? We all lose that touch. Like he and I didn't even see Pinocchio, so I don't even know if I agree with you. I may love it, but like this thing is, is like he, but you didn't like. Do you get into the aspect of it as like where I'm like, wow, at one point in 1955, there's five DeLoreans, and I love shit like that. That's cool. Yeah, but you can't have that without three. You can't have it without all the time travel, like all of you like can it absolutely takes time have travel that without three. But but it takes but like you're saying like all right, it's about his family and kids. Where I'm just like wow, two's really about like how fucking chaotic and fucked up things you get when you start fucking with the time stream. But <laughs> that's like, the icing. That's it's not the, the icing. No, no, no. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Star Wars. The kids are the least Star Wars. exciting part of part two. But here's my... Because they fucked it up. Here's my point. Also, it didn't help that they made part two and three five years after the first one. It was yeah. too much of a gap. But here's my point. Star Wars. Yeah. And, and where they went wrong with the sequel trilogy and where they went wrong with the prequels too is they get away from the point of the original trilogy, which is the family... It's about Luke coming to terms with his father. Oh, I don't know. The, well, hold on, hold on. It's why the Godfather. For, it's why the Godfather works. It's about the family. It's not about the mob. Back to the Future is about the family. It's not about time. But he travel. saves Doc in the but first one. But it's a. Fa but it's a story about the family first. That's got to be the foundation. But it's, so my point is, why does it have to be the foundation? It's about time because that's travel. Good storytelling. Yeah, but he he goes back, but it's about a like Doc is. So you're saying Doc's not part of his family because he's not blood related. I no, I I get that you could make the argument that even the dog he already like saved a part. Doc in the first one. He saves Doc, well, but he already saved his family in the first one. So why do you want to see that over and over? Because again? plus it's a Western like because the future this is shit. What, this, I don't want to see future shit. I could, because it's never going to be true. I could tell you what the third one should have been. <laughs> I, I promise you, and this is better. This okay. is a better idea. Okay. Okay. The way trilogies work, I think this is Joseph uh, Campbell, right? He sure. Many faces. I think this is his like theory on trilogies. First one is the adventure. Yeah. Second one is the deeper emotional journey. Third one brings you back to the elements of the first one. Okay. okay? Which is exactly what the original Star Wars uh, trilogy. Certainly does. one way to skin a cat. But it's it's a great way to 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 deal with a fantasy story. It's exactly what back to the. It's exactly what Star Wars, the original trilogy, does the first time. But, and I know, by the way, I already hear it in the comments. But, DeRosa said it's about the franchise. The only talked about was the original trilogy. I'm getting. To it's it. okay. But my, my point is this, though. But, you, but, I think you're ignoring this, though. Hold on. I think you're ignoring this. I, I, I want you to finish that. But like, it's a movie about time travel. They have to make that exciting. Hold on. We've seen 55. We've seen the future. It's not like, a movie. I think that's fucking cool. It's it's not a self conscious movie. A self-conscious movie means it can't be the movie without the genre itself, okay? In other words... You literally cannot make that movie without time travel. But you could, in theory, okay, you could say, this is not a movie about time travel. This is a movie about a guy saving his family. The time travel is the world that we're, we're setting it in. So in other words, Goodfellas. Goodfellas is a movie that cannot take place outside of the mob world it sure. is entirely reliant on a being a mafia movie okay every single thing that moves that movie forward is related to the mafia okay. period the godfather could be about 
real estate. It could be about oil. It could be about a million things outside of the mob because at its core, it's really about the family. Okay. Back to the Future, in my opinion, at its core, is much less about time travel and way more about a kid that is trying to save his family. They just tell it in a very fantastic way. That's my opinion. But the third one is, I think, if you because you're talking about how you view it through different ways, but you can make the argument that the third one is about him saving his family too. Doc's dead. He's like, I'm going to go back. Doc was already dead, though. We already did that, and they're just redoing it again. But that's all right. But but so is the family. But but But, so what? Who cares? But here's how it could have been cooler. You ready? I'm ready. Here's how it could have been cooler. Give me your And it would have, it was, is it Joseph? No, Campbell. Then this would reflect Campbell. You got to stop fucking hand jobbing this Joseph Campbell. No. Yeah. He's only the guy that influenced George Lucas to write the original. Yeah, but then George Lucas did what he did. Yeah, well, but here's, listen to me. Back to the Future 2 should have been this. Uh, It should have been Marty going to the future. Yeah. It should have been a better version and telling of that story. And it should have been his adventure in the future and saving his kids. You would have wiped Hill Va- the, Hell Valley on. off no, the map? No, I'm not. Listen to me. And then your cliffhanger at the end, and this gives me chills when I say it because uh-huh. I've said it out loud before. Part two ends with Marty going back to 1985, going, I did it. I saved the day. He shows up, and the last shot is him walking into that town square, and you see the chaos, right. and you realize Biff has done something awful. And then the third one, hold on, the third one is now him in 1985 alternate, dealing with that, and then going back to the 50s, so it brings us full circle to the original movie, to save his mother from what Biff has turned his family into through his power. Yeah, but, but, but you got all that. They they got they, they gave rushed, you that they rushed through it so we can how get to us. How much more did you want? They rushed through it so we like can, how much more? You the know I'm shit. right. You know I, that would have made for a much more dynamic trilogy. I don't know about that. I love three. <laughs> I the way I look at it is this. I love that they were like, let's fucking go crazy. It's a time machine movie. Let's get back and show something that like if they had went to ancient Rome, I would have liked it. Like I like that they were finally like, we have a time machine. Let's break it out of this. Then book. you know what it should have been the third one. What? Then you know what it should have been, and Tell I've me. said this too. It should have been Bill and Ted. It should have been him time jumping through all different periods on some crazy whatever. They blew this third movie by making... Because Robert Zemeckis and What's-His-Face had a hard-on to make a fucking Dude. Western, and they shoehorned it into a goddamn franchise. It's not a shoehorn when you have a time machine. You could just go to the Old West. Who wants to see that? I want to see it. This is an amazing movie about technology, and we're going into a place that has zero technology. Right, so how do they get out of that situation? That <laughs> uh, sounds who great cares? to me. I love that idea, and I love that DeLorean was buried for all that time. I who love cares? that they had to make... the I, I mean, I guess me. I Like, the chip on the... Like, I love the look of the DeLorean with the I'll, white wall tires. I'll knock my I'll knock my own. I'll knock my own. You didn't even watch Back to the Future 3. That's the fucking yes, thing. I have. You watched it half of it when it first I can't came get out. Through it. And, and then so you didn't even watch it's horrible. it. Horrible. It's a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. You can't fucking say that. You haven't I don't seen... need to walk up to a pile of shit and bury my nose in it to know it's a yeah. pile of but shit. But everybody calls a pile of shit a pile of shit. Back to the Future Part 3, a lot of people are like, including me, I love this movie. I so will, it's like I will knock my own you franchise. Been... I will knock my own franchise right now. I will knock my own franchise in defense in, in order to support my own point mm. back to the future three is exactly why star wars fans d- hated the fucking phantom menace why because instead of giving us a movie about dog fights in space and space pirates and all these things we loved and family let's do a movie about political trade routes and you're like i don't want to do this but that's not what they did they made a movie about time machine where they got stuck in a situation that they had to get and out they of. took every fun it's but no, it's they got, didn't they had the same shit half the cast of the all, other two movies were in it it's all rehashes of jokes for the third time for the third time they rehash it. you're here back in good old 1885 <laughs> i mean i'll give uh, you that one <laughs> mad dog cannon i, I gotta give yeah. you that one. no mad, mad dog cannon's mad awesome dog Oh, he drove into a pile of manure. But why don't you? It's why do you the accept? Same fucking but jokes. Why do you accept that Biff is a prick? He's his grandson's a prick, but not his great grandfather's a prick. He's a prick. Fine. Yeah. But the point is, is they do the same joke. He drives into the fucking manure. They do the thing. Yeah, but where how many times in Star Wars are like, I got a bad feeling about Marty, this? It's the stop same. It. You fu- stop it. It's you the same fucking it. line in every. You it's stop the same it. thing. It's the same thing. 
It's just, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah. Everybody in the galaxy Dude, far, far away a has a bad feeling. Phrase, that's a catchphrase <laughs> that they plan each... It's, no, it's, come on. You know that that's weak-ass <laughs> bullshit sauce. It's a, it's, a, it's a callback. It's the same no, fucking structure. What I'm saying about Back to the Future 3 is the same criticism you could... Lo- if you had your shit together... My could shit's be together. against The Force Awakens right now. That it's a rehashing of shit you've already nobody seen. At, nobody at home wants to hear fucking us talk about Force Awakens. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, attack my franchise. I'm telling you, because I got I got what, all what, the what, time in the world to attack I, I, yours. <laughs> we don't. I got to fucking go. It's twelve thirty one. I was supposed to be out of here at twelve thirty. You got to go. I don't yeah. got to go anywhere. You... I sit here after you leave and bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking Jar Jar on screen. Listen, I can't. I, my point is this: is it's like you have such a strong, angry opinion of a movie that you haven't even watched. I have watched it. You never watched the whole thing. I have seen. You never watched the whole thing. I've seen it in its entirety. I'm the one that's got to get my shit together, but you've never even seen the fucking movie. I've seen it in its entirety out of sequence, and I've tried several times to sit through it from start to finish. I can't get through it. It's a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. It's a fun movie. Back. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't die. Don't die. Come on. What are you doing? (laughs) Eating pretzels while you're screaming. What the fuck? Back to the Future 3. All right. Back to the Future 3. You know what it is? Back to the Future 3 feels like... When they do a sick a movie about a sitcom that went off the air, it feels like the facts of life go to Europe. You know, when they like- did one of those, or they'd be like, "Different strokes are back, and different strokes go to the old west." That's what Back to the Future. You, feels you're like. telling me you wouldn't fucking watch Back to the Future? I mean, an old west facts of life. Of course, you'd watch that. This was fucking sweet, dude. This is a time this machine. Is this is argument? what we should be doing. This is your it's argument. your argument. You're the one that brought it up. And you would watch a facts of life. You're the telling old me west? you would not watch facts of life go to the old west. I would fucking pay money to see that today. <laughs> Come on, man, Mary Steenburgen. What do you got against Mary Steenburgen? It reminds me of. It reminds me of like, the, like, the, like the, getting, you, the car getting pushed by the like, train. Such a oh. fucking great idea. Listen, I'm not saying that there aren't elements in Back to the Future Three that create suspense. You don't like Doc? I love Doc. So then, why don't you want Doc to be happy? I just... He's got kids, oh he's got God, Jules, oh, he's I got Vern. about that, that they bring in a... Fu- they said this. They go, we felt that in the third movie, it was time for Doc to have a love interest. Why not? Shut up! Nobody cares about weird Doc having sex! I, a fucking another thing I'd watch if I, I had the ability. I Mary Steenburgen and her hottest is banging this fucking freak. <laughs> Are you nuts? But they read Jules Jim Vern together. Taxi is banging fucking yeah, Mary Steenburgen. That's She's right. She's married to Ted Danson, for Christ's sake. She's the hottest died. man that ever lived. You think Ted Danson's the hottest man that He's ever lived? He's fucking gorgeous. He is gorgeous. <laughs> Sam Malone, I'm not going against that. But that's why it's a fucking movie, man. And they had those two kids. Einstein, like they got him out of suspended animation. I hated I that fucked. too. Why? Einstein and whatever he named the fucking Copernicus. Kids. Oh, Jules and Vern. Yeah, Jules and Vern. You didn't name your kid Marty? When he brings that fucking kid forward, and goes. Why would he name that kid Marty? What? Why would he name the kid Marty? After the guy that just saved his ass? Yeah, but so what? His best friend. Dude, Q, you're telling me. When Doc brings the kids forward, he goes, Jules. Jules. And then he brings the second kid forward. He goes, and? And you're literally going, Marty. No, And I- then he goes, Vern. And you go, oh, because this fucking third rate fucking uh, love interest that you just brought in likes Jules fucking Vern. We're naming the fucking kids after, yeah. the, after the guy that saved the fucking universe. And and your fucking ass came risk life and live to come back f- to the old west. Uh, you think Doc looks at Marty like he saved the universe? Or does he think the two of them saved the universe? I think Doc owes Marty a lot at the end. Sure. At the end, I think I think Do- Marty. I think Do- Marty allows for Doc to have the life Doc always dreamed of. If you want to get into the importance of Doc, yeah, it, Doc does not have the time train or any of that shit without Marty coming back to save his fucking ass. Okay, okay, and Doc would be dead on the that. ground if it wasn't for Marty bringing him the letter in the first movie to, to save his fucking ass. But that family wouldn't ass. exist, and those kids wouldn't exist if not for the writings of Jules Verne. So why is that not something that you could be like? I name my kids after this. Me and my wife love it. They were it's, obviously in the past for another eight fucking years while he built the train. It's just, it's just, come on, dude. It's, it's that is the moment where they show you. They have forgotten what the fuck this trilogy is about the most. That is, it's a happy are, ending. They are so far. I'm telling you though, they are so far from the point of everything that they don't name that kid Marty. That That's you're just insane. like, I couldn't even these believe are, it. I, I, you can't even argue with these quibbles because they're so fucking out there <laughs> that I don't even know how to like. He's. I, you see how angry he is that Doc didn't name his kid Marty. Like, what? How am I supposed to even? Like, what am I? How about this? How about this? Hey Marty, here's my new kids, Vidal and Sassoon. Who gives a shit? 
Who gives a shit? Because that wouldn't connect to the movie. That wouldn't connect How to the movie. How does Jules Verne connect? Because that's why they fell in love, because of the writings that's of Jules Verne. That's my point. You're going to bring this fucking broad in, and she's getting the names on the kids in the third installment? It's not going to be Marty? Give me a break, dude. It what would have made more fuck? fucking sense if you named the kid Biff, for Christ's sakes. Biff and Marty. It would have made more sense it, after all these guys have been through? Dude, if you, what are you talking about, man? Oh, come on. He fell in love with her over Jules Verne. They had kids out of that love. And then named him Jules and Vern. I don't think that's a stretch. Out of all the things to complain about, I don't know that that's the, time the one. The train is a disgrace. Why is the time but train? But we don't even have time But wait, for what that. sort of tech? But what else would he make if he... What are you talking about? If he was stuck in the past. I, I know you hate the because, time train. Because I, I, and I he had to what. create a vehicle to, to get him to the future. Because what else would he use? Because I can tell you why, okay? I can tell you why. It wasn't and to make what toys. You said, it's what you said at the beginning of your argument. Mm. In the first movie, when he makes a time machine out of that DeLorean, yeah. it's all taped together. It's all like you can see the fucking scotch tape. Yeah. And you're like, motherfucker, this almost seems plausible. Right. It almost seems believable. It runs on plutonium. Yeah. It's the whole story about how he had to steal the plutonium. Every element about it, you're like, this actually seems pretty fucking plausible. When that stupid train flies in with the wheels and it's all glossy and gleamy and perfect and all that shit, it ruins it. It sucks. It's like in when it's like in Phantom Menace when the heroes are driving around in the fucking silver uh, platinum ship that looks like a fucking like perfect like Trans Am spaceship the, the or Nibu, whatever. The Naboo uh, cruiser. Yeah. It ruins it, dude. That's not what this is. That's not what the technology... That looks like something out of, like, a Mickey's fucking Christmas Carol or some shit. Like, that 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 sucks, dude. And you know that that sucks. I don't think that sucks. That what, sucks. Why does that suck? It but looks absurd. It's it looks a like, train. It looks like a Disney cartoon. No. The way it flies in with the fucking... Uh, with the moving wheels and all that. It's a flying train. We can agree that Mary Steenburgen's pretty fucking... Pretty fucking cute in this movie. I told you. She's at yeah. her fucking peak, and I'm I supposed know. to believe Look she's banging this fucking ghost? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there they are. Jules and Vern. But that sucks, dude. Come on. I don't think I that mean, sucks. Uh, uh, Brian, that sucks. Look, it's got wings. It sucks. It flies. <laughs> dude. It sucks. He, what else would he build a time machine out of back then? Oh, my God. A horse and carriage? How could he build that? He's fucking Doc... Doc fucking brown man like yeah with no reason he so he can't get his own ass out of the fucking old west but he builds a time train well he no that wasn't the problem he probably could have but the deadline was a uh, mad dog shot him in like six days seven days whatever it was i don't know man all right look uh, i gotta go i i can't i gotta go i mean look i got i thought go. i'd have to at least kind of defend star wars uh i don't know but i didn't really you. have to at all well we spent a lot of time talking about evil dead and it's always sunny we, we kind of ate it up yeah so, All right, Pip, let's go to the phones real quick because Q's got to get out of here. Uh, a low-key went Back to the Future win, but you cannot stop Star Wars. Back to the Future is iconic. Star Wars is a diluted brand. That's what I thought you were going to go after a little bit more because I agree with that, actually. Yeah. But I still think Star Wars is better. I never really made a point about saying why I thought Star well, Wars Well, because was I don't really have anything to argue because I love Star Wars so much. It's hard for me to be like... I to give think, you something. I think Star Wars as an overall franchise did a better job of keeping me intrigued and sticking to at least somewhat to the lineage of what brought me there in the first place. I don't think Star Wars ever went quite as far. Maybe if there was a Back to the Future 4, I'd feel differently. I don't know. But I really think 3 completely ruins the goddamn franchise. Will you go see the Broadway show? Yeah, I'll go see that. I'll go see, see with that? you. All right, let's go see let's it. Let's go see it. All right. All to right, be right. fair, I've never seen Star Wars, clear bias. Back to the Future, <laughs> easily such a cool 80s time capsule with a well-told story and ended before the corporation mouse could get to defile it like it did with Star Wars. This is I knew this would be the argument yeah, against this Star Wars, is the which is fair. I got to be honest, you might fucking win because people are hating on Star Wars right now. Easy Star Wars had only siblings that wanted to bone. Back to the Future had a mother wanted to sleep with her future son. <laughs> Here's the other thing. I, 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 in total clarity, and I told you this before we recorded, uh, to the audience at home, like I know people that work on the Star Wars shows. Yeah. So even if I wanted to trash him, I, you know, God. I have to walk out of here. And There's have, a fucking veiled admission right there. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> even, if I, even if I wanted to trash him, I couldn't. 
So I'm kind of in a spot where it's like... Well, I'll, I'll trash Star Wars. I just think it's a spin-off of the Bible. We're back to the future's original content. I uh, see. I'll rest That's on that. That's a point, pimp. I'll rest on that. Uh, Thank you. Back to the future all day because a guy almost fucking his mom is way cooler than a guy almost fucking his sister. Let's give that the win. That's pretty funny. Dan Scully, at Dan Scully. Follow <laughs> at Dan, S-C-U-L-L-Y. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Do you have a sister? Huh? You don't have a sister. <laughs> no, why? I don't have a sister. So I never, like, that never grossed me out like it grossed other people out. Because I don't know. Me out, and I'm adopted, so Marty almost banged You're adopted? Mom, I didn't, didn't know that. I'm kidding. I'm totally oh. joking. I'm oh, totally right. joking. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> joking. I'm joking. The Marty mom thing always did gross me out. But it is weird how they play it. Because, what's her name? Um, yeah. Lorraine? Oh, yeah. well, Leah Thompson? Leah Thompson. Leah, Leah Thompson. They couldn't have made her hotter. No. In that scene no. where she kisses her own son. Yeah. They made, like... She's Those shoulders, got her fucking cleavage yeah, out. Like she looks like a dream, man. They've got her powdered, so yeah. she looks like like so fair skinned, yeah. and like it's weird. They're they're clearly being like it's kind of weird, right? Yeah. Like they're not just being like, oh, it's awkward. They're being like, what would you do? Yeah, <laughs> and let me tell you something. I I, remember I did that episode of Picard a few yeah. last year. She directed it. Oh and wow! It's like even with the COVID mask on. And I think she's like sixty one. She's gorgeous. I was like, I was like, I reverted back to that. that she's moment. gorgeous. I'm like, oh my god, her daughter. I, I love now. her so her much. Daughter is really smoking. And I say that with all due respect. Yeah, all due respect. I of really course. do. Of I'm course. not being a shit. Yeah, the daughter is beautiful. Really. Yeah, and you're like, man, I remember when your mom was your age and she was beautiful. <laughs> all right, good all right. stock in that family. What do we got? I got. I do have to run. I'm sorry. Star, Star Wars. Wars one. Look at that. But, but only by it's, so it's sixty that's point pretty, two. That's a pretty big. That's a pretty big win to thirty nine point eight. It's not as big as a lot of people would have bet. A lot no. of people would have bet that it would have been star, a pummeling on Star Wars's part. That's a nice margin. But I got to tell you, I for a minute thought that Back to the Future might win because Star Wars people are, it's are had more opportunities on, to shit the bed. Yeah, and and Back to the Future does have that thing is it's been so long yeah. that like. You could paper over the well. You can't, but like a lot of people could paper over the aspects. Like you said, like back in old nineteen eighty four, you know, yeah. nineteen fifty five. Like when you said that, I had to laugh because that was corny as shit. But like that doesn't factor in because it's been so long. It doesn't factor. So you I know. tell you what, I'm gonna give yet another chance to Back to the Future Three. I have it on Blu Ray. I'll give you've it. You've made shot me this again. promise before. I'll give it a shot again. <laughs> Let's watch it together. All right. Let's watch it together. Let's watch it together. Okay. All, All right. right. We always end with, I, st I still love you. Oh, I still love you. Taste buds. They come into the mic. Talking about the food they hate. Talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds. Man, yeah, they come into the mic. I'm talking.